Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I've got a pretty cool piece to share with you guys today. We're going to take a look at a, uh, a custom knife from my collection. This is the Model 17 by Sergei Rogovitz of Extreme Addiction. Um, so a couple months ago, actually three months ago, I shared with you guys another custom model from Sergei that I had on loan. That was the Model uh, 113 or Object 113 as he called it. And I was really, really impressed with the knife. The fit, the finish, the attention to detail. Um, I loved everything about it, but the the shape of the blade and the handle, it was unique, but it was a little too unique for me. I wanted something a little bit more streamlined, something a little bit more, I don't know, vanilla. Um, so I told him, I said, hey, if you ever make this model in its exact configuration in your model, um, I think it was just 13, um, he had a Warncliffe style, he said, let me know. And um, much to my joy and, and dismay at the same time, a couple weeks later he said, hey, I'm making a new model, um, you know, are you interested? And I said, well, you know, let me see some pics, let me check it out. And he built a brand new model called the Model 17, and that's this particular model here. So, um, just a couple weeks later, he had essentially built me the knife and um, you know I couldn't resist um, because I was so taken back by the uh, object 113 or object 113 that I had on loan that I had to pick this one up so um, this is his new model the model 17 obviously it's a large Warncliffe style blade it's a titanium frame lock and we'll just kinda take a look at it in detail as with all his knives um, they do ship with a branded Pelican case. He includes a uh, you know business card as well as a uh, I think it's a Torx 20 here for the pivot that you need. A little carry cloth, and then a certificate of authenticity uh, that's like you know stamped, signed, uh, serial number, and all that good stuff. So. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. So this is a, a new model, and this is the first one completed. I think there was one prototype before this one, and then this was the first one that he let go to, you know, a customer, a collector, whatever you want to call me. So this is model number 1701, and it has his signature as well as the blade steel designation, which is CPM 10V. So while we're going through the specs on this one, <clears throat> I'll bring out another another Warncliffe here. And that's the ZT0392 Purple BLK. I don't even remember the designation. It's freaking long. What is it? It's there if you want to know. BLK Warncliffe. All right. <clears throat> so the specs on this particular one, blade length of about 3.75 inches, handle length of about 5 inches, Overall is you know just about 8.75. Handle thickness is 0 0.73. There it is next to the 0392. And obviously these are both Warncliffe. They're both frame lock flippers. They're both on bearings. They both have stainless steel lock inserts. This is a production, and this one is a custom. So. Yeah. Now the thing that I guess I should just say this is within my top three favorite custom knives, um, and it was from the moment that I got it. And I, you know, based on my experience with the Object One Thirteen, I kind of figured that it would be. But a couple things that I really like about this one, and it may not be for everyone, but I love the laser work that he did on this. It's so unique and it's interesting and it's artistic and you know on the handles he did a pretty heavy orange peel that you may or may not be able to pick up um, so it just it feels I don't know it, it doesn't feel dainty it doesn't feel delicate even though this knife is an amazing blend of art and function and I don't know it's it really is the epitome of functional art so I talked about this in the last video but um, Sergey is a third, no, a second generation jeweler, and 
you know, he spends half of his times on half his time on custom knives, half of his time on custom jewelry, and you know, it's I don't know. I feel like his knives really do embody um, an artistic element to them that I don't know makes it somewhat unique from everything else in my collection. So um, I I don't know. I just love this piece. The you know CPM 10V is obviously a, a you know very very premium steel. I'm sure I'll never use it to the full extent that it can be used, but he put a beautiful uh, mirror polish on this Warrencliffe blade here. Um, obviously, it's been given an acid stone wash, and the black blade with the, you know, the plain titanium handle with the laser work, it, it just goes really well together. Initially, I wanted a uh, an M390 blade, but when I saw him do this limited run of um, CPM 10V, and I saw this the black on the blade matching kind of the black laser work. I was like, you know, it's it's perfect. It looks incredible together. He has a copper inlay on the blade, which is a signature mark for him. That's something that he's going to do on all his custom models. And the opposite side, uh, copper around the pivot on the lock side. There's that stainless steel lock insert. The 3D pocket clip, again with uh, with the laser work on there too. Now this knife doesn't carry terribly deep. It you know, essentially you have this much sticking up out of the pocket. I really don't care anymore. Um, you know, all of my coworkers know that I'm a knife enthusiast, and um, there's really no secrets that I have a knife on me at all times. So I'm not really concerned about that anymore. Um, but the thing is that makes his knives really really incredible is that everything is hand done aside from the laser work and if you look at this knife I mean you would swear that it was done by a CNC machine and I mean that in the highest compliment possible that you know typically on on most of my custom knives there are little tiny things where you can see that it's not quite perfect but you're you know you forgive it because you know that it's a handmade element um, so, you know, it's it's perfect from a functional and use standpoint, but, you know, if you're really getting down with a, a jeweler's loop or a magnifier, you're going to find things that aren't exactly perfect. But with his knives, um, I can't find any imperfections at all. I mean, you know, you look at the, you know, the work on the backspacer here, and this would be an easy spot to see that, Hey, maybe you know the chamfer on this side is a little bit deeper than on this side, but um, they're just perfectly symmetric. Um, there's there's just nothing that would indicate that this was done by hand, even though it was. So that's something else that I love about his work is just the absolute perfection. Super clean lines through the lock bar cutout. The way that the stainless steel lock insert integrates with the handle is interesting. Again, more laser work that's interesting. The action is uh, very smooth and positive. It's, you know, there's no resistance when the blade's closing. Now, is this the hardest flipping knife I have? No. Is it the absolute smoothest knife I have? No. But when you look at everything together, it's just perfect. So, um, I, I mean, I really do hold his work in the highest esteem. Um, and I'm just, I'm stoked to have a piece that I, you know, I love so much. You know, I already showed you the backspace for this uh, beautiful piece of huge chunk of uh, polished Timascus here. Um, it's just an incredible pop of color that, you know, is not in a spot that's going to get scratched up necessarily. So, and I've carried this knife a lot. Um, if we got down here, you just see lint and crap everywhere. But there's just no visible marks on the knife. Um, even though I've carried it and used it. I did have to clean a good bit of tape residue off the blade before the video though. But the grind lines, again very clean even with the acid stone wash you can still see very clean grind lines. You can see the polished edge. The way the, plun the plunge line kind of mirrors the angle of the handle, I like that too. Um, it's just it's just a beautiful piece. Jimping, so he calls this, um, he asked if I like my jimping sharper or more rounded. I told him sharper, and I guess this is his concept of sharp jimping. Um, it's perfect. Um, 
you know, I wouldn't mind if it was even a little bit sharper, but um, it catches the finger well, it flips well. He did go ahead and put a, you can see it right there, he um, ground down a spot for the detent ball to jump up onto the tang of the blade smoothly. So, right there, which is something that, again, I really appreciate just for smoothness. So, anyways, guys, um, beautiful piece. It's unique in my collection. It's, it's an incredible marriage of art and functionality, and it's not a piece that I'm afraid to carry and use. I mean, I have less expensive pieces in my collection that I'm more concerned about getting jacked up, but this thing is, I don't know, it's, it's bulletproof. So, yeah, really taken aback. Um, just wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, again, some of the additional specs, uh, he does use stainless steel Japanese bearings, he uses a ceramic detent ball, and he doesn't go to shows because all of his knives are either, you know, customer orders or they go to dealers, so um, no plans for shows in the near future. And it's a completely handmade knife, um, aside from the laser work, so anyways... Um, I think I've uh, rambled on about how much I love it uh, a little too much at this point. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look with me at this uh, beautiful custom piece from Sergey Rogovitz of Extreme Addiction. And I'll put the links to his website and his Instagram in the uh, description box below, as always. So, more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Take care.